January is Glaucoma Awareness Month, so this morning we are focusing on the health of your eyes. 90 million Americans age 40 and up have some type of eye or vision problem, and the CDC says that rates for eye disease and other causes of vision loss are rising and will continue to rise dramatically without effective interventions. Dr. Christopher... Christopher Starr, I'm intimidated by the ophthalmologist, <laughs> got it, an associate, is an associate professor at Wild Cornell Medical College in New York, and he joins us now. Doctor, thank you, you nailed it. Thank you. Got it. Nailed it. Perfectly. Thank so you. why is this risk of vision loss on the rise? Well, we're aging. The society is aging. We're living longer, which is a good thing. Uh, but with age, age is probably the number one risk factor for almost all of the severe eye diseases, cataract, glaucoma, macular degeneration, dry eyes, and all. A whole list of others. So it's Glaucoma Awareness Month. Yes, what is glaucoma? Our last day of January, and it is oh, just still, barely. so technically oh. it's still. And one of the things, you know, glaucoma is one of the leading causes of irreversible uh, vision loss or blindness in extreme mm. cases. And the, the problem with glaucoma is it's asymptomatic. You don't know you have it. Uh -huh. And so the, one of the misconceptions is, oh, I'm young, I see well, I don't need glasses, I, why do I need to see an eye doctor? Well, the reason is because there are a lot of these conditions, like glaucoma, that might be taking your vision slowly and you wouldn't even know it wow. yeah. without an eye exam. So, I'm always fascinated wow. when I see little kids with glasses, because I'm thinking, uh. how do you know they need glasses? And I ask that because when I was in elementary school, I got hit by a truck. The truck driver said, she literally stepped off the curb and walked right in front of me. So I'm very lucky. I, I only Yikes. suffered a broken leg. And so they took me to the doctor and realized my vision was so bad, I literally didn't see the truck. Wow. wow. Yeah, I did not really, see- Really, Gail? Yeah, this happened to me in Turkey. I did not see the truck. Wow. So I'm thinking, and, and so when I finally got glasses, I thought, oh my God, is this how people see? Because everything was so clear. Yeah, it was like you had a superpower. But seriously, I'm kidding. I'm not kidding. Yeah. Yeah. I thought everybody saw the world kind of like that, and it never occurred to me to say, is something wrong with my vision? Mm. Exactly. So yes. how, when should you start testing kids? Those, those, those how are do you great know? points. And you know, kids should be screened, certainly in school. When they're born, they're screened in the hospital. But usually between the ages of three and five, we three recommend- and five. A, a good eye exam, even if there are no obvious signs of problems. But like you said, a lot of kids don't have the words to kind of, you know, or they assume it's just normal. Uh, but if you see your kids squinting, uh, oh. sitting really close to screens or TVs, mm -hmm. um, if they're turning their head to look at you, that might be a sign that there's a misalignment, a li oh. little lazy eye. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the interesting things is a lot of kids with dyslexia, with learning disabilities, yeah. well, a lot of those kids just can't see. Oh. Uh, and so any uh, kid with diagnosis of learning disability or something mm -hmm. like that, definitely get their eyes okay. changed. Now, as the weather conditions change, that can also impact yeah. our eyes. Um, yeah. Dry eye is something yeah. that happens quite often. How should people treat it? Dry eye, well, that wow. If we had uh, two hours, we could go. Really? It. it is a big topic. Dry eye is essentially ubiquitous, almost everybody. We've been talking and oh, yeah, we all kind of yeah, <laughs> have it. Yeah. Uh, and the weather is a big factor. Certainly the weather, high, low humidity, cold air, mm. you know, thanks to global warming, we've got all these extreme weather things happening. Yeah. Uh, allergy season is coming. That can certainly uh, trigger and exacerbate us, allergies gosh. and dryness and, and ocular surface irritation. Um, the best way to be treated really is probably to see, you know, see an eye doctor. There are so many little variables that we can only really pick up on an eye exam. I mean, the simple things for dry eye, oh, you know, over-the-counter lubricants, usually yeah. preservative-free, blinking more when you're on the computer, humidifiers okay. in the bedroom, you know, warm compresses for the eyelids. These are simple things that almost everybody can do. Okay. But if you're suffering, and this is one of the key messages is, Nobody should be suffering. You know, a lot of people say, "Ah, oh, you know, you can, you can I, I don't want to. I got to deal with it." I don't. Yeah, it's one of these uh. things. No, we have so many treatments. There's so many things that have been FDA okay. approved, even in the last six months, yeah. that well, you know, nobody should suffer. Well, well, on this last day of uh, glaucoma month, asking for a friend here. Yeah, Tony. How much marijuana do you smoke to prevent glaucoma? Is that true? Does it really it's work? Unfortunately, the, the data it, with- Is true? It, no. It, oh, it's it, not it, true. It's not really you know, beneficial. I mean, uh, and it even also dries out the eyes, too. It, even in very large amounts, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's certainly, I have gotten, I'm not Chris, judging. No, I've got no problem with it, Chris, but it doesn't must, help for glaucoma. You must be a hit at, at a party, because yeah. when he first walked in, I walked in and said, There's a twitching in my left eye. And then I came you over said, and I was like, am I recovering from conjunctive? And I got so close I could kiss him. I was like, look at my eyes. Yeah. Um, no, we appreciate it. Well, last question. Um, you know, 
lot, not just kids, but adults. We oftentimes bring these screens closer True. and closer and closer. Yeah. Yeah. Does, is that bad for us? Well, you know, the, there's the, the screens themselves don't damage the eyes, okay. but staring at screens certainly can cause fatigue, can cause strain. We're calling it digital eye strain now. Certainly okay. when you're staring at a, a computer, you're not blinking as much. The, the eyes do dry out. Okay. Okay. And looking at uh, screens and all the blue light that comes from screens at night can keep you awake and stimulated. Okay. So there are some, and for kids, by the way, who are sitting inside looking at screens all day and not yeah. getting outside, the rates of nearsightedness in kids is skyrocketing around the world because of that. All right, Dr. Okay. Christopher Starr, thank you so much. Right. We appreciate thank you very it. much. Are you still ahead. taking patients? Yes. Okay. All right, we're Come all on. signing up. Yeah.